in this video I'll show you exactly the thing that I do to reduce the render time in 3ds Max. It's been a while since I uploaded a new video because I was working on this one. The 7 methods that I use and you can use it as well to speed up your render time and your workflow. So if it's your first time here, consider subscribing and turn on the bell notifications to get notified when I upload a new video. Alright guys, let's start with number 1 on our list, optimize models. Optimize models based on their distance from the camera or the level of details needed. Use high polygon objects only when they are close to the camera. Adjust the level of detail of models according to their visibility in the final render. For example, if you need cars in your visualization, but they are going to be far away from the camera, use simple models. A car on a street can be beveled when it's close to the camera, but those that far away can have sharp edges. Number 2. Remove unnecessary geometry from the scene. Delete all the objects that is located outside of the range of the camera and won't be visible in the final render. Delete all the geometry that is hidden inside or covered by other objects. Delete all the hidden models and models on hidden layers. Sometimes you don't know if there is hidden objects comes with other models you import to the scene, unless you check it out. To find the hidden objects, go to select by name window, click on display, object types, display hidden objects. The hidden objects and objects with hidden layers will have the hidden option ticked. To find the models lost outside of your scene during the importing or working on the project, right click on anywhere inside the viewport and choose the Inhide All option. Number 3. Use an instance instead of copy. In 3ds Max you can copy an object either as copy or an instance. When you copy an object as a copy, the new copied object will be stored on both hard drive and RAM. However, if you create an instance, 3ds Max will just store the information that a copy of an object is present in another place in the scene, but keeping only the data of a single object in memory and in the same file. With an instance choice, you can put a huge number of copied objects into the scene, and they will use practically the same amount of RAM and file size as a single object. Number 4. Use pre-rendered planes instead of models. When you want to create an environment for your scene outside of your camera view, but you need it to reflect or cast shadows on the scene, and instead of using models, use planes with pre-rendered textures. If you don't know how to make a pre-rendered planes using opacity map, check out a link to a video explains how to do it in the description box. You can also use this method for objects which are far away from the camera. Number 5. Attach the model into one object instead of group. The more objects in your scene, the long time render. 3ds Max is much more efficient working with 1 million polygon objects than 2 million polygon objects. Attach the group components together into a model. You can simply do that by ungrouping the group, select one of its items, convert it to editable pulley if it is not already, then attach the rest of the group to the current item. That will work perfect. Number 6. Limit your poly count as much as possible. The more poly count in your scene, the bigger the scene file, the more RAM it needs in order to be rendered, the slower rendering, and the longer rendering time. To know the whole poly count in your scene, you can simply press 7 on keyboard to activate the statistics display in active viewport, or click on the plus sign in the upper left corner of the viewport, and choose X view, then show statistics. You can turn more statistics options on and off by clicking on the same plus sign and choose configure viewports, then select the statistics panel. You will find a bunch of settings like what you want to be shown in the viewport, polygon count, triangle count, edges count, etc. Also, you can determine what statistics you want to display on the viewport. You have total, display only the statistics for the entire scene. Selection, displays only the statistics for the selected objects. Total plus selection, display the statistics for the entire scene and the selected objects. Number 7. Always proxy the ones with high poly count. The proxy idea is to take a heavy poly count model and transform it into a low poly model on viewport and get the same heavy poly model quality after render. I've made a video about V-Ray proxy and how to use it in the best way. I'll leave a link to that in the description box. But I'll show you now how you can find the heavy models in order to proxy it. Show statistics in active view will not be a suitable option when you have lots of models. 
It will take time to know and compare between the objects, but here's a way to find all of them in one place. Open the window select by name or just press Edge on keyboard and click on faces columns to sort the models according to the amount of its polygons. That way you could find the heavy models easily. If you couldn't find the faces columns, you can always add it to the menu by clicking on customize and choose the configure columns option. You will see a list of additional columns, one of them being faces. Last thing always remember to save a copy of the scene before making changes to be able to revert to older settings in case something goes wrong. That is all for today's video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. See you next time.